Welcome to my lecture online. And here is another interesting problem from the JE main deck. It deals with simple harmonic motion and this particular problem is one of those that can really twist your brain around. So you have to go by your definitions, what do you know to solve this one correctly. So let's read the problem and see how to do it. In the given figure, so they do give you a figure, a mass M is attached to a horizontal spring which is fixed on one side to a rigid support. The spring constant of the spring is K. The mass oscillates on, an, on a frictionless surface with time period T and amplitude A. When the mass is in equilibrium position, as shown in the figure, another mass is gently fixed upon it. The new amplitude of oscillation will be, and they give us four possible answers. Now, what we could do quickly when you take a look at them, notice that the new amplitude is in terms of the old amplitude times some sort of fraction. Well, it could be a number that's bigger than one or a number that's smaller than one. Now, definitely you would not expect the amplitude to be bigger afterwards when you place another mass on top of it. Now you have more mass to move back and forth, your amplitude is going to decline. So, whatever this number is, it has to be smaller than 1 for it to be possible. Now, notice that this is smaller than 1 because m divided by m plus m, if m is greater than 0, then this must be less than uh, 1. But here, notice that when you divide m by m minus m, that's a number that's greater than 1, so definitely b could not be a possible answer. Here, when you look at m minus m over m, this is less than 1, so this could be a possible answer, but here m plus m over m, that's a number bigger than 1, and again, this is not possible. So right away, if you don't know how to solve this problem, at least from the perspective that the amplitude has to become smaller, you can already eliminate two of the four answers, and now you have a 50-50 chance of guessing the right answer. All right, next, how do we approach this? What is the concept here? Now notice when you place one object on top of another like this, that's kind of like a collision. So whenever you bring two masses together, one thing is always conserved, which is momentum, and the other thing is essentially never conserved unless it's a perfectly elastic collision, and that would be energy. So the principle of conservation of energy is key to solving this problem. So conservation, oh, not energy, conservation of momentum. So if we use that principle, what do we get? Well, that means that the momentum before equals the momentum after. So the small mass times its initial velocity, but notice we only care about the velocity in the x direction. So the small mass had no velocity in the x direction initially, so that goes to zero, plus the big mass with its initial velocity. That must equal the sum of the two masses with the final velocity. And of course, this goes to zero, which means that the final velocity is equal to the initial velocity times m divided by m plus m, like that. And then you take a look at these possible answers and you go, well, maybe that's one of them, but that would be a stretch to make that decision at this moment in time. So, what we can then say is that our energy, our maximum energy, E max, before we add the small block is going to be equal to one half the big M times V max squared. So that would be the velocity at the moment that the block goes to the equilibrium point, which is when you put the small mass on top of it. So that's the initial maximum energy. Once you put the small block on top of it, what happens now is that E nu is going to be equal to one half the new mass, which is m plus m, and let me write the big M first, big M plus small m, times V final squared. So we know that the new energy, which is going to be less than the maximum energy we started with, is going to be equal to this. We end up with a smaller velocity, because notice that this is a fraction smaller than 1, so we end up with a less velocity, and we end up with more mass. Next, 
because we're dealing with the amplitude, we can also say that the E nu is also equal to one half K amplitude nu squared. Right? Because afterwards, what happens is we have uh, a new mass oscillating back and forth with a new maximum velocity and that will then will then give us the equivalent potential energy stored in the spring when it's completely collapsed at the maximum amplitude. So we know that those two have to be equal to each other. Okay, now it becomes a little tricky. Where do we go next? And notice we have the new energy in terms of the kinetic energy, we have the new energy in terms of the potential energy. But what we should do first is this. Notice that we have V final expressed in terms of V initial and a ratio of the masses. So what we're going to do is we're going to then write an equation for E nu, which is equal to one half M plus M times V initial and that has to be squared, Oop, that should be a 2, squared, times the ratio of m squared and m plus m squared. And then simplifying that, this cancels out with one of those. And then notice that we can write this e nu as 1 half mv initial squared times m over m plus m. So notice that the new energy is the old energy because that's the original energy that was the original velocity and the original mass, so the original energy times a fraction less than one. So now the new energy is less than the old energy. So we can do the same for the potential energy. We can say that E nu is equal to the old energy which is one half K A squared where A is the original amplitude times the ratio, oh, K A squared, yes, times the ratio of M over M plus M. Now, if I write it like this, E nu is equal to one half K A squared times the square root of M over M plus M squared, like this, then you can see that a nu must equal A old times the square root of M over M plus M. And so now I have found the relationship by first comparing the kinetic energy, nu to old, because this is the old kinetic energy, and then I go to potential energy, this is the old potential energy, times of course the same ratio, because the same fraction, because the total energy has changed either way if I use kinetic or potential energy, it doesn't matter. Then if I realize that if I write this like this, then I can pull out the A nu, which is A old times this fraction, the square root of that. And then we come up here, and then we realize that answer A, one of the two possible answers, end up being the correct answer. So yes, it's uh, these types of problems especially with simple harmonic motion when you change something and then you try to find the change in something else, they're usually mind twisters. And no matter how they're phrased, there's lots of different ways we can phrase that. It kind of makes it difficult and you always have to go back to the basic principles that you have. First of all, conservation momentum to find the new or final velocity. Then realizing that this was the original energy, the new energy, is then going to be defined by a new mass and a new velocity, which is defined here. And now we have to find the relationship between the old energy and the new energy, both in terms of kinetic energy and potential energy. And finally, once you have the change in the amplitude, realizing that A times the square root of M over M plus M, then you have the new amplitude defined in terms of the old amplitude. And that is how it's done. Um, yeah, right from the beginning, when I had this relationship here, I was leaning very much to saying that's got to be the answer because of the way the, the ratio of the masses were, were positioned there. But 
Again, it's a leap of faith. Maybe it's, maybe it's the inverse. You don't know, right? Well, once you're substituted in, then you know that it's not going to... Correct. Once you're substituted in, and it's even like this, you realize that it's probably going to be that ratio right there. Yeah. You're not, you realize you're not going to have to move it to the other side of the equation. And even if you do, the other one is M minus M. Yes. You realize that this is always going to be on the right side of the equation. You already have your ratio, so you probably want to go yeah. through a leap of faith. M minus M. This one's M plus M. Well, the, the minus could not, this could not be, this could not be correct. No, no. Oh, and here's M minus M. So yeah, that's also a very unlikely scenario. So yeah, you probably don't need to work all the way through in order to show that you got the right answer. So that's how you always you know, save a few seconds here, a few seconds there. That is true. So first of all, you could quickly eliminate these, and then you want to eliminate this because the minus, because you end up with this. Yep, that's probably good enough. because then you run out of time at the end and you can't do all the problems, so you want to save time. So this was probably not even necessary, simply by realizing conservation momentum. You have this relationship, so it cannot be this one, it's gotta be that one. Done, move on, yes. I would take my chances on that. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're right. That leap of faith, that's not your intuition. <laughs> it's not even that big of a leap of faith. Yeah.